What's up everyone and welcome once again to the channel. This is your boy Lewis and today we're going to be talking about Miss World. Finally, I know that so many of you have been messaging me and asking me to start my coverage of the pageant. Believe me, I've been dying to start talking about the girls. However, because I'm trying to negotiate with the Miss World um, organization to go to India and cover the pageant in person, this has been a very painful process. So I haven't been able to do so. But I think it's, you know, the pageant is already ongoing in full motion. So I wanted to start talking about the things that really matter. So just a few moments ago, the head to head challenge officially ended. And many of you requested that I react to um, the full performance of Miss Philippines, Gwendolyn Fournier during this particular segment. I am also going to have a separate video where I will be reacting to the five winners of the entire challenge, which, by the way, have already been announced and automatically they will move on to the top 40 of Miss World. So that's already a little hint at uh, the girls at the organization are seeing a lot of potential. But today's video, as I said, is about Gwen, Miss Philippines. And I really wanted to take a moment to give her a spotlight because of a few reasons. First of all, I met Gwen a few years ago here in the Philippines. Uh, as you guys know, she has been preparing for this particular moment for a very long time. And finally, she gets to compete at Miss World. But Gwen is arguably one of those girls that didn't get as much support and hype from the local fans in the country. Uh, some people were even questioning her capacity to obtain a placement. Well, I'm very glad to say that Gwen has been doing an excellent job at Miss World. She has, um, she has been in a lot of ways exceeding people's expectation because so far she managed to place within the top 25 at the head-to-head -head challenge, which is one of the most important. Uh, we have yet to see what is going to happen with the Beauty with a Purpose uh, project as well. But she also managed to end up in the top eight of the continent of Asia uh, for the sports challenge. And remember that back in the day when uh, Julia Morley came to the Philippines alongside the reigning Miss World, they also granted Gwen um, a check of 1 million Filipino pesos for to go towards her project, which is the Erda Foundation. So for today's video, we're just going to listen to her head-to-head -head portion, see what she had to say, how she presented it, and uh, let's talk about it, okay? So I'm just going to share my screen right here. And um, just a little reminder for you guys, if you enjoyed this, go ahead and leave a comment, like, be part of the conversation in the comment section down below. And don't forget to subscribe, share this video with a friend, and all of those things. Go ahead and do your thing. Me, I'm going to get my headphones, and let's talk about Gwendolyn Fournier. Miss World Philippines. All right. Thank you, Nepal. And uh, now it's the turn of Philippines and Gwendolyn Forno. 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 And Forno. Yes. And uh, Gwendolyn's currently studying for a bachelor's degree in economics and is an ambassador for Educational Research and Development Foundation. And uh, we uh, has ambitions to play a vital role ensuring that there is free education for everyone in her country. So welcome the Philippines. Okay, so I just wanted to make a quick comment when it comes to this, because we all know that, um, you know, education here in the Philippines, it's a big topic. Uh, Gwen is definitely not the first beauty queen and definitely not the last who talks about this, um, especially in regions of the country that are not, you know, so close to developed areas or the cities or perhaps like marginalized areas as well. And this is one of the things that Gwen has been tackling with her organization, which is the Erda Foundation. I believe that this is very close to her because this same organization helped her mom back in the day uh, so in a way she's just you know working with them collaborating with them and it's kind of a full circle moment so let's see how she presented it to the world <laughs> no pun intended Mahatma Gandhi profoundly stated once live as if you were to die tomorrow learn as if you were to live forever these words resonate with the timeless significance of education as not just a privilege, but a human right. Grabe. Okay, so she's already starting really strong with the quote. So my girl is going the intellectual route, which honestly, I think that all throughout the Miss World experience, if she's going to do it at some point, this is the time. Okay, Miss World is not just a pretty face pageant. It's really an intellectual pageant and you have to show that you are putting in the work. So I'm glad to see that Gwen is going in prepared. And as I said earlier, although there's many naysayers and people who don't believe in her, she is proving that she can do it. All right, let's keep watching. 
Now, today I speak before you to advocate for the Sustainable Development Goal number four, which is to ensure inclusive and equitable education for all and promote lifelong lifetime opportunities. Mm -hmm. And growing up, I personally experienced how my mother's journey was exceptionally the transformative power of access to education. So the access of learning tools, which was all thanks to URDA Foundation, stands for Educational Research Development Assistance. They provided her with an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And this enabled her to finish her academic degree and also enabled her to uplift our family out of poverty. This is exactly what I was telling you. So Gwen's story goes beyond just, you know, some made up advocacy that she just wanted to, you know, create from the ground up or something like that. It's really something that is close to her heart because it has to do directly with her family, with her mom and the fact that she was able to get her education from the Erda Foundation. So I, I think that it really makes it very relevant for Gwen because, again, it's not something that she's just coming up with. It's something that she can relate that she understands and that she gets to see firsthand because someone as close as a parent went throughout this experience and kind of um, was able to see the the fruit, like the, the fruition of all of these efforts that the organization was putting in back then. Um, this is what education is all about. Mm -hmm. It is to destroy the cycle of poverty and to open doors to opportunities, to a brighter future for individuals and communities. Now, numbers do not lie. UNESCO reports an estimate of 258 million children and mm -hmm. youth in the world do not go to school. Okay. And I really like this part because Gwen, you know, at this point in the competition, she hasn't won. She is not Miss World 2024. She is Miss World Philippines. So. At this point, the expectation is for her to talk about the Philippines, the country, her project, what she's doing, you know. But remember, she has to go head to head with all of the girls who are competing. This is what the challenge is all about, going, you know, against one another and kind of like outsmart each other. I like that for a moment here, Gwen is taking her project and talking about numbers that have to do with more than just the Philippines, more than the country that she's represented, because she's at Miss World. So, of course, she's going to talk about you know, the children back home and what she's doing for them, but also bringing up uh, statistics and numbers that are relevant and kind of um, illustrate, present the reality of, um, of education and how many children all over the world don't have access to it. So 235 million children try to visualize that amount of people. And imagine it's literally kids uh, and that's just heartbreaking. So it gives a perspective to her project and how relevant, how important it is. 7.9 million of those children are Filipino children. Wow, 7.9. And even those who are enrolled, they don't even have fair access to quality education. Hmm. It's all disparity. So those children who are in marginalized communities have the least access to quality education. Girls, children from low-income families, and those who are in conflict area have the least access to quality education. Mm -hmm. Now. How can we solve this? The answer is TIP, technology, investment, and policy. With technology, we can leverage the educational gap that is currently happening. And I have actually tried this in our learning center, which I've built with the help of many people. And we have gathered 20 iMacs, internet, projectors, to make sure that the children will be able to learn even outside of classrooms. Second, investment. We have to invest into education and make sure that it is reached to marginalized communities. You know, I actually wonder if this is something that Gwen came up with, you know, the solution per se um, of the entire, um, you know, like T I, uh, uh, what is it? T I. Uh, a P, TIP for technology investment and policy um, because she's talking here basically about the SDGs which is something that is very known uh, different pageants use this system uh, precisely Miss International if you're familiar with that so Gwen here is going with something that is standard you know in terms of objectives and goals for development this is something that it very it's very standardized on an international level now I wonder if the solution that is that she is proposing it's what 
precisely this international standards propose as well, or if this is something that she came up with herself. Because the way that she's explaining it is basically presenting the solutions, going with the initials, and then explaining for each one of them what she has done on a personal level to kind of tackle this education problem in the country, if that makes sense, right? Personally, when I did an outreach in the Philippines, I went to a very isolated place called Imaras, Iloilo. Mm -hmm. And I saw how hard it was for them to reach for resources, for learning tools. And I met a girl called Vognia. Thanks to Erda, she is the first graduate of her tri tribe and she is now a teacher. And that investment is that she is giving back to her community. She is teaching and she's ensuring that all her six siblings will have access to education. Grabe. I really like the way that Gwen is presenting it because first of all, I mean, Gwen is very eloquent. This is something that we have known forever, ever since she competed even at Miss World Philippines back then. Uh, but I love the fact that it's almost like storytelling. It's very organized. As I said, she's going with something standard that on, a, on an international level is understood. But also she is attaching stories and faces to the points that she's explaining so that people can actually relate to it. And rather than just throwing, you know, terms such as education investment and, you know, policy, she's actually talking about human stories, which a lot of people can relate to. Even if you don't understand these terms, if you're not so familiar, you don't know what SDGs are, you can listen about the story and understand why this point that she's talking about is important, you know, basically by investing in these communities and by you know, giving them access to certain technologies, they have been able to create something for themselves, get themselves out of the poverty cycle, and then give back to the others, you know, to the rest of the community so that they can also do the same. So in a way, by investing, even if it's in just one person, that person is able to break the cycle of poverty for themselves, for their family, for the loved ones, or in this particular example, this person became a teacher. So imagine how many lives a teacher can can change, can have impact, can just give so much to, to the children, right? So I think that this is brilliant um, when it comes to Gwen's presentation. Next is policy. Mm -hmm. Now, policymakers need to ensure that these policies and laws are regulated and mandated for people who don't have access to quality education, those who are in dark places, isolated, those people I've worked with every single day at Urda Foundation in Baseco area, which is the poorest area in Manila. On. We need to ensure that these are the people that are being heard. Those children, their stories, stories like Rodnia, stories who deserve to be heard on a platform like this. Okay, I'm just going to I'm just gonna say real quick, something that I noticed uh, and that I like as well is that uh, on Gwen's presentation, basically she went from... Uh, technology investment and policy. The, the technology is something that she was able to do herself. As she said, she was able to give to the community a certain number of, you know, whether it is computers or tools, whatever it is. Uh, the investment is something that she has done herself, but also, of course, with the help of investors and other companies getting involved to help with the project. And finally, the final layer is um, policy, which is something that goes back to politicians and people in a position of power who have more access, more reach to change something in the long term for these communities. Because, I mean, um, doing what Gwen is doing, like, um, you know, like opening schools and like giving them tools and technology is extremely costly. And at some point for it to be sustainable, the government needs to be involved. So I like that she went from what she has done personally, what she has done in collaboration with other people and, and companies and organizations, and what she wants to do with uh, government in terms of policies, in terms of changing the things to break the cycle, right? Now, they announced that she is already at her limit, so I hope that she's going to wrap it up soon, or this might hurt her, basically. I want to thank Madame Julia Morley for giving us a Beauty with a Purpose platform for allowing those children to be heard, because we all are, we are all interconnected as one earth, one family, and one future. Thank you. Okay. All right. So that was it for Miss Gwendolyn Fournol. Um, I think that Gwen did an incredible job. Honestly, I'm very happy with the entire presentation. As I said, very eloquent, very composed. Uh, she didn't seem to be nervous. She didn't seem anxious or anything like that. So 
that's already commendable because I will be shaking my boots. Um, I don't know if by the end, the fact that she exceeded the time might have hurt her, but I hope that it didn't. Anyways, no complaints on a personal level. Um, let me know how do you guys feel. Gwen officially ended within the top 25 of the head-to-head -head challenge, which is remarkable. And as I said, she has been excelling as well in other challenges. So I hope that we can all come together behind her to support her going forward in her Miss World journey. I will keep you guys updated if there's anything, you know, any news from the Miss World organization when it comes to my coverage. I'm ready to fly to India anytime. I'm just waiting for... Miss World basically to confirm. Uh, so yeah, I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you for watching. Go ahead and leave a like, comment, subscribe, share this video and see you on the next one. <laughs>